I want to welcome you to another session with Coffee with Cleo. We are interviewing with, uh, of course, the Vice President of Milton Caterpillar. That's Beth Peace. Beth, thank you for being part of her show. Uh, of course, her, her, the organization that she works for, of course, there are six dealerships, 12 dealerships that are, are located in six states in the Northeast. And Beth, uh, I want to ask you a question. Uh, and this question has to do with leadership and your lessons learned over time. And the question is, what is one lesson you have learned in your career that has helped you and one lesson you wish you would have learned earlier? Sure. So um, one of the things that I learned early on um, was really to get to dig in and to get to know the organization and the industry and the people that I was working with. And I've always tried to do that. Um, tried to understand what the connections between all all those parts were and uh, and try to share that with others and be willing to speak about what I saw and what I saw as opportunities. So it's really that um, learning, taking the time to learn, but then taking the time to share um, what I saw in a situation and what I thought some of the opportunities to either improve or to change were. Um, one thing that I think I didn't learn as early in my career as I could have was being willing to go from that and then have some of those more difficult conversations. Okay. So um, sometimes those were interpersonal um, and I, I did learn some of that in business school. We had some very good lessons about that, but being willing to um, just sit down with someone or pick up the phone and, and say, you know, I, I think we're seeing this a different way. How are we going to handle this? Um, you know, are, are we really talking about two different things here? or is there a common ground and to move on from that? Um, or from a business standpoint to point out something that just didn't seem like it was working right and uh, how are we gonna fix that? For sometimes, uh, particularly on the corporate side, those can be a little thorny and uh, thinking about uh, looking back, it would have been good to be a little bit more upfront about some of those things when I saw them. I appreciate again, the, the candid feedback. I regardless of, of where you are in business and in, in your leadership position, I think you've made a couple of good points, especially about not just continuous improvement, but also self-awareness and the ability to continually to learn. And it's a question I like to ask everyone mm -hmm. and that I speak with on this show is what have you learned and what is that you wish you would have learned? And uh, I think it's important that as long as you're able to show vulnerability, which I think not just humility, but vulnerability is a very admirable trait and a strong trait, especially in today's leadership world. And uh, you possess that. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, there's another question I'd like to ask you, and it's around diversity, mm -hmm. specifically uh, in your entry into the construction business. And what changes uh, have you seen? Uh, what uh, encourages you? And what would you like to see moving forward regarding diversity and inclusion? Yeah, so uh, as you probably are well aware, construction is traditionally a pretty male dominated industry, uh, a lot of family businesses, um, and um, it can be a little hard to break into at times. Um, what I have seen as far as change is I think that more of the, in particular, more of the female leaders um, within organizations, you're seeing more of them step up and become involved in the industry. Uh, I think you're seeing that even in some of the technical parts of the business, but it is still a challenge. Um, and I think reaching people of all kinds of diverse backgrounds and, and situations is something that the industry still continues to need to work on to uh, increase our talent base, because it really is about finding the right people with the right skill sets and, and welcoming them into the organization. So I think like many old line industries, that's still happening, uh, but I'm encouraged by the progress. That's great. And of course, you represent that progress by being in your position and uh, able to bring in a, a different voice. Uh, and of course, with all of your background experiences as well to continue on to impact the industry. Thanks. You know, the last question I have for you, Beth, is what advice would you share? And again, I, a book I just offered about a month ago called Coffee with mm -hmm. Leo really is a candid, honest uh, expression and sharing of leadership lessons. And people that are aspiring to be in your position one day, I would like to know what advice would you impart upon them and those people that are seeking a career within your industry and what is it that you could share and what skills should they be working on to develop or acquire in their quest to be in a position like yours? 
Yeah, so I think uh, a couple things. So specifically to this industry, it's always good to understand the different parts of the industry, what matters to a, a customer or a, a, an operator in a particular part of, of that business. Um, and to develop some skills of understanding the equipment, you know, what's, what's what, how does it operate, what are some of the benefits of it, um, what are the technologies that go along with that. So this business um, is becoming much more technologically advanced and that's actually some of the very exciting space in this industry. And so um, understanding that and how it applies and how it benefits the, uh, the operator and the owner is an important thing to get to know. Beyond that, I think it's much like any business, developing your people skills, your interpersonal skills, um, knowing who you are and continuing to learn. Uh, we have so many great resources today that didn't exist when I started in the business world. When you think about things like podcasts and TED Talks, and there's so much information out there. In fact, there's too much information, but picking out the, the pieces and, and looking at diverse sources of information and continuing to learn from it and um, just getting to know the people too, uh, not being afraid to ask questions, I think is a really important skill to continue to build as anybody's coming up in their career. You know, Beth, I, you, you have such a unique background and I am gonna sneak in one more question. So I, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna ask for a little bit of uh, forbearance in advance. But, you know, I serve on the Texas FFA a foundation board and also mm -hmm. the National FFA Foundation Board and been blessed and honored with the FFA Honorary American degree. I believe mm. in, in agriculture. Congratulations. You have, thank you. Uh, but you've, you've worked both in the agriculture and the construction uh, mm -hmm. the industry. Uh, what are the nuances um, that you see in those industries and what are the threads that tie them together? For someone that has been. So, so I think uh, the, the thing is both have to do with the land in general and movement of the land and um, there's an element of building things, whether it is a crop that you're starting with and eventually it turns into something uh, that people or livestock can consume or can become a fiber um, or it's construction and it's work on a building, right? So you see that at the end of the day, um, maybe you're digging the foundation for it with your excavator, but at some point you walk away from that and other people step in and there's that building process. So at, at a broad, um, Point, I would say that's the connection there. Um, and, and also, as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of longtime family businesses, and I'm talking more about construction companies um, than maybe uh, some other aspects of property management or, or things like that here. Um, but there is also, um, I think there's, uh, it's a little easier to get into the construction industry. So you have a lot of people who start mowing lawns and uh, eventually buy a skid steer, a compact track loader, and then their business grows from there and it may grow in a totally different direction. In general, it's much harder to get into large scale agriculture in particular. Um, so that does tend to be, uh, have maybe higher barriers to entry. And so I think you see some differences in the kind of operations and, and the kind of, um, careers people have in one or the other. Well, I want to thank you very much again, uh, Beth Peace, Vice President of Milton Caterpillar. Vice thank President you, Cleo. Of thank you so much for joining us with the uh, session of Coffee with Cleo, and we'll look forward to the next cup of Coffee with Cleo. All the best. Thank you, Cleo. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.